All right, and welcome back to another session of Pellet Tech 101. Uh, today I have a Harman Accenture freestanding right here. And what I want to do is I kind of want to take you inside of the Accenture freestanding uh, as we remove those inner heat exchange panels. We'll go through best practices with cleaning those heat exchangers for maximum heat efficiency. And then I want to cover that inner combustion baffle plate. Uh, it can be a tricky plate on the Accenture freestanding in particular to pull that out and place that back in. So we're just going to go over some tips and some tricks. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take you inside the stove just so we can get a closer closer view in there of these tabs. So in the Accenture freestanding like this, we have a tab in each upper corner that we have to push up in order to release those rear cast iron heat exchange panels. So we've got one right up here, just like that, just to release it. It'll fall forward. We've got this guy right up here, you get the light. You guys can see that. Yeah, right there. So that little guy right there, same thing. We're just gonna lift it up and we're gonna allow that heat exchanger to come forward. So very simple locking tabs up here that hold those inner baffles in place. So that's gonna be our first step is to release those ears, allow those two panels to come forward. All right, now that we have the upper tabs moved up so these panels are loose, what we're going to do, they have two little ears that hold it into this combustion baffle plate right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift up by kind of turn in and then down, just like that. And at this point, we can fully remove them from the unit. So again, we'll do the same thing on this side. We're going to lift up, and move over, and down. From there, we can take up right from the top, just like that. Now that, that we have those removed, that's gonna expose our rear heat exchange tubes. And we'll go through some best practices with those rear heat exchange tubes that are in here just to ensure that we always have maximum efficiency. The next thing I wanna show you though is removal of this combustion baffle plate that's back here. <clears throat> so it, it is, uh, it could be a little finicky. So there's some, uh, some tricks here to show you guys how we can take this out and put it back in a little easier. So on this plate, we essentially have a, uh, a lift up clip right here on the left and on the right. And sometimes these can be uh, a little stuck. So if they're tough, feel free to soak those down with a little WD-40 uh, prior to trying this out. We're just gonna go ahead and release those ears up. Now that it's loose, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this plate out towards us. And as you can see, it's a lot wider than the opening here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this left side as I'm facing the stove, and I'm going to tuck that all the way into the corner, which is going to release that side. And I can fully take this out. I'm not struggling, I'm not banging it around with stuff. So again, all the way into that far corner. It'll go in just like that. So we'll just run through that one more time. So again, we just have two ear locks. We release those ear locks, we pull it off those nubs, and we're going to push in this left hand side corner all the way. That will release this side out, and we can pull this all the way out of the unit. Once we have that removed, as you can see that is going to expose our combustion fan paddle plate and our throat here that goes all the way back to the exhaust. So we'll go over some different things here with uh, just overall cleaning and maintenance but that is the, uh, the best way to remove that inner combustion baffle plate. All right, so as we have that baffle plate removed right there, again, it's gonna expose our combustion fan paddle from the interior right here. Uh, and again, it's, uh, it's always a good thing to inspect that paddle. Generally speaking, you're just gonna see some fly ash, you know, maybe a little bit of buildup that forms on that panel. Uh, but it is important to, you know, check that along with your routine maintenance, make sure that it's clean. I always just like to use a dry paintbrush. I'll hold one finger on here just while I kind of grab those fins and just kind of brush off that paddle a little bit, get any crud off of there. Again, same thing here when you're working within the stove. It can be good to have a mask on, you're not breathing in these particles. So yeah, it is a uh, an aluminum fan paddle right here. Uh, depending on the stove, some are stainless steel, but generally speaking, these are aluminum fan paddles. So we don't want to give too much pressure on here. We're just giving it a nice brushing all the way throughout. 
And this fan paddle is held on by a single set screw. Now it's hard to see in the video right here, but we have a single set screw right here for an Allen screw to go in and release that. Uh, we'll be going through a combustion fan replacement and we will need to remove uh, that set screw and pull off that fan blade uh, to basically be able to pull out that combustion fan from the back side. So sometimes that set screw can be tight, same thing. I'll let that soak with a little WD-40 for a while, let that penetrate in uh, so I can break that open. Again, as we go up just a little bit higher right here, we're gonna go right into the exhaust throat. You'll see our ESP thermistor probe kind of sticking in the back. So again, I a lot of times just do a physical inspection of the throat. This one looks pretty clean in general, but again, if we've got a lot of ash buildup and so forth in there, you know, we'll get our vacuum cleaner in there with a crevice nozzle, get that sucked up and cleaned. We do want to be very careful of that ESP thermistor probe. It's a very sensitive device, so we don't want to be jamming a vacuum cleaner nozzle and hitting that probe. Very important. Uh, it is important to clean that ESP probe, and that will be done from the backside. Uh, we do have a video up on that as well. So if you need to clean that ESP probe, which is good maintenance, uh, tune into that video. Uh, but yeah, as we check the throat, we're just looking for any kind of excess buildup. We'll suck that out, just being very careful not to be hitting that ESP thermistor probe. All right, so now that we have that fan paddle just kind of brushed off, cleaned off pretty good, what we want to do is we want to hit our heat, our heat exchangers right here. And obviously on this one, uh, we don't have a lot of ash buildup right here. But again, depending on the pellet that you're burning, how frequently you're using the unit, uh, it is good to clean off those heat exchanger tubes. In the Harman Accenture right here, these are cast iron heat exchange tubes. And again, as, as ash builds up on these tubes, it has a tendency to insulate them, not allowing them to absorb as much heat and pump out. So for max efficiency, to make sure that I'm, I'm really being uh, energy conscious with the amount of fuel going in to the amount of heat coming out, I like to say that it's good practice to brush off these heat exchange tubes after we burn about a ton of pellets through here. Uh, again, uh, if you want to do it more frequent than that, I absolutely see no problem with it. But if you're starting to notice it doesn't feel like as much heat is pumping out, you know, definitely want to check those heat exchange tubes and remove any ash that's on there. Now, the, uh, most of the Harman models will come with a, a, what we call an aero scraper tool. Let's see if I can get a good angle on here. But this scraper tool is designed to kind of fit in the grooves of those rear heat exchangers like that. Just like that. Now, one little trick here that I have is uh, as you're cleaning those heat exchanger tubes, you can definitely have the unit plugged in as you're just working on the internal firebox area. We're not working with any of the components. We can have the unit plugged in. We can turn that control board to test so that combustion fan is actually, is actually pulling in so that we don't have as much uh, dust or ash enter into the house. Uh, obviously, we can lay down kind of a, a drop cloth in front of the stove. And again, always a good practice to have uh, you know, some kind of mask or ventilator in place that's on so we're not breathing in that ash and those particles. But we can use that aero scraping tool to clean those accordion heat exchangers. And then what I like to use, I like to use a dry paintbrush. So I just feel like I can get more surface area when I'm in here with a dry paintbrush like that. Use different size. A lot of times I'll use a big fat one, you know, a nice two inch wide paintbrush in here. But we'll see that it kind of gets into the top right here too. So again, we are, uh, we're cleaning that ash out. More ash that's out of here, more heat that's gonna be pumped out of the house. It's that simple. So again, I'll just get those thoroughly all the way up, all the way down. And uh, again, just good practice to be doing that about every ton of pellets or so. But that is the overall uh, cleaning as we look at the heat exchangers inside of a Harman Accentra. Very similar on a lot of the other Harman models. And the main thing was again, the removal of that uh, of that combustion baffle plate that's inside there. And just a little, a little trick to help you get it out easier without banging your knuckles or, or getting frustrated with that. All right, we'll just kind of close out the video here by putting the combustion plate back in there, putting our heat exchanger uh, panels back in place. All right, so again, obviously, that side covers over the combustion fan paddle. I'm gonna go left side in first. I'm gonna tuck it all the way into the corner in there. And then let the right side push in. Just letting that line up over those two posts. And you'll kind of feel when it feels nice and uh, 
in place there. We're just going to grab these little ear tabs, turn it over, turn it over. When our plate is back in place, we're going to grab the cast iron heat exchange panels. So you're going to go up and in. I'm just going to take this to the side. We get the two little ears in first. So those will sit in there just like this. I can push that panel back and allow the ear to close. Again, just two little ears that we have right here that are going to sit in that combustion plate. You can see those. Again, we go up from the top, go over and up. Again, we just allow those to sit right in that combustion bath plate, push it back. And again, we just have the little ear in the upper corner that we pivot down. Check it, everything feels nice and solid in there. So that is the removal of a combustion baffle plate and heat exchanger baffles and just kind of best practices as we get in there and do some, some general maintenance. So thanks again for joining us for another session of Pellet Tech 101 and we'll see you soon for the next video.